Hey guys, this is Thoughts on Walks, and this one's a little bit different. This one is going to be about how do I make a Thoughts on Walks video. Okay, so I've been doing these Thoughts on Walks, and I enjoy doing them because, you know, I have to do about my five miles a day. I try to put in about five miles a day of walking. And since doing these things, I've had a bunch of you people writing to me and saying, hey, how do you make these videos? What gear do you use? What's your workflow? So I thought for today's Thoughts on Walks, that's what we cover. We're going to talk about which equipment that I use, the kind of process I use, if you can use that word, the process I use to make the videos, how I shoot the videos, and then ultimately how I actually edit the videos and then deliver the videos. So let's start talking, first of all, with the gear that I use. Now, the gear that I use has changed over time. You know, I used to start very simple with one thing and I've moved up to what I use now. So let's take a look at the gear that I use. And by the way, sorry for the audio quality. I'm in my living room. This has like 20 foot high ceiling. So it's really echoing here, doing the best I can with the audio. The thing I started my thoughts on walks with was simply my cell phone. Right here I have a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. I've had others before and what I would simply do is I would turn on the camera and have it facing me like this. So there were two inherent problems though that I would have trying to do it with my phone. The first inherent problem as you can see from this footage is that I'm pretty close to the camera. It doesn't have a very wide field of view on the front facing camera. There's not a lot. Now some phones like the Google Pixel 3 instead of having a wide angle lens on the back of the camera, like most phones do, they actually had a wide angle lens on the front camera as well. So you could have like really wide selfies, but most phones don't have that and this doesn't. The second problem I had with doing thoughts on watch with my phone was when I would walk, you're seeing, you're probably seeing this in the camera, it was very shaky and unstable. Now the good thing about it was the cameras in our phones are pretty high quality. They're pretty damn good. And on top of all that, we all have them. So, and also because you're so close to your phone, you're actually getting pretty decent audio for something that's not a lavalier mic or anything. So that was the advantage of this. But again, the problems of having too narrow of a field of view and of course the shaky footage meant I had to find another solution. So what I decided to do was to get one of these selfie sticks and hopefully it would solve a couple of problems. Number one, I could put the phone right in to the selfie stick. And that gave me the option now of having the phone a little bit further away from me than I would normally. So the field of view became less of an issue. Now, the two drawbacks of this though, well actually three drawbacks. The three drawbacks of this is, number one, you look a little weird walking around the street holding one of these sticks, but whatever, I look weird walking around the street anyway. The second problem was the fact that, remember I said with the camera being close, with the phone being close, you get some pretty good audio. The further away you move your camera from you, or in this case, your phone camera from you, the less and less quality the audio is. The third problem was, while this stick certainly fixed the problem of getting a wide enough field of view, the problem is you still had shaky issues as you were walking. Now, it did help to stabilize it a little bit, I found. I found that the, the footage was a little bit more stable using a stick like this than not, but it's still a little bit bad. So it was a step up and something you can still totally do, but I thought I needed something even a little bit more. So that's when I really decided to go for it and I got myself a camera, a phone camera gimbal. This thing is called the DJI Mobile 3. And what it does, if I can, uh, there we go. What this thing does is it gives you stabilization and it comes with this little attachment on the bottom that is a tripod so I could stand it up, but also gives me a little bit more of an extension of a stick. And now I could walk around and I could even like with this thing, you control the camera, the pitch of the camera, there's controls on here and I could walk around and I had a little bit further away from me so I had better field of view. And because it was on this gimbal, it took care of all the shake. I mean, not all the shake, but it made the shake in my video a hell of a lot better, like a hell of a lot better. Still a little bit of an audio issue, but overall, it just gave me a much better, better image. Now, the drawback, there's two drawbacks with this uh, Mobile 3. Uh, number one is it still has a little bit of a problem with the distance of the audio, so there's that. The other problem is now we're starting to get into bigger and bigger gear because the advantage of just having the phone is that you can just carry it in your pocket, pull it out anytime, start shooting. Even the little selfie stick is a lot smaller and I could just throw it in the back pocket as well. This starts getting a little bit more hefty. Now I have put this thing to good use and I have used it several times. 
And so I was doing my thoughts on walks with it for a while, but again, I felt a little bit too, I don't know, like I stood out a little bit too walking down the street with this much bigger piece of gear hanging off of it. So it's very useful and helpful and it might be right for you, but I still thought I wanted something a little bit more inconspicuous. And that my friends is when I found this little baby right here. This is made by the same company that makes that gimbal. It's called the Osmo Pocket 3, also made by DJI. Now, as you can see, it has built right in its own gimbal. This has all up, down, left, right, full 360 degree access, all that. Comes with a little bit of a display on the back. And just by clicking the buttons, you can see that the camera turns around and faces me. Now, one of the really neat things about this too is I'll start recording this here as well. It tracks my face. So if I start to move my arm, watch what happens. I won't turn the camera at all. I'll just move my arm. The camera is automatically tracking my face. And even though I'm moving the camera, the camera's moving left and right to track my face. So if I had this on a tripod like this and I moved over here, it will follow me. And I move over here, it'll follow me. So the two different things combined. Number one, that this thing is on a gimbal of its own really, really helps. And then the fact that it has face tracking. So I can be doing my thoughts on walks and I don't have to worry about keeping an eye on the monitor because I always know the camera will have me in frame. I can move my arm around like this and still keep looking forward and it doesn't matter because it will always follow me. Now, the one big problem that comes with this little Osmo Pocket is that the field of view, much like on the camera, is pretty narrow. Even at full arm's length, and I'll record this so you guys can see it. Even at full arm's length, even at full arm's length, you see that the camera is still just a little bit tight. Well, one of the advantages of this little thing is that you can get extra lenses. Let me show you. This little thing right here, I believe it's by a company called Freewell. It is a wide angle lens. And all you do with it is you take it and you place it on the cover. And I'm gonna record this here. So this is me without this lens. And the nice thing about this lens is it just sticks on magnetically. So you can see the, um, how wide the angle is now. But if I put this on, look how wide the angle is now. It's significant, I'll take it off, pulls in really tight. I put the lens on and it gives you a much wider field of view. With this little lens on now, I can hold this at the same length I used to hold my cell phone, only I get a nice wider shot. Also, because it's on a three axis gimbal, it's a nice, smooth, steady shot as well. And also I was really surprised with how good the microphone on this thing is. So what I ultimately settled on and what I use right now for my thoughts on walks is this little thing, the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I think it runs for about $400. So it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but for what I do, incredibly handy. Okay, so when I go on my thoughts on walks, I always bring my tech bag, also known as my iPad bag. So this is what I carry around with me in the bag. First of all, obviously, we have my iPad Pro. This thing has replaced, this thing has replaced my laptop. I do my mobile video editing on this. I do all my mobile computing on this. So this is the main thing. And of course, I have a keyboard case for it as well. Also inside my tech bag, I always carry around a battery. I always carry around an extra battery that can plug into any of my stuff that I need powering, whether it's my phone or my iPad, so I carry that around. I also carry around extra, extra cables, as I have a hard time pulling this out, extra cables for powering. Now, I also do a couple things. I carry around my Samsung earbuds. I use these for all my audio, both for my phone and for my, when I'm uh, editing video on my iPad, I use these headphones. Okay, so now that you know what gear that I'm using and that I'm using the Osmo Pocket 3, we're now outside, so I will start my walk. Now, usually I like to walk to downtown Burbank, and I used to, I like to go down there. There's this outdoor patio that I like to use, and I sit down and I edit my videos out there, and I like to relax, it's, and this, that's also where I write my show notes every day for the next day show. So, I just start my walk, and I pick a topic every day, and I just pull a topic off the top of my head, or maybe it's a topic one of you guys send me, and I just start talking about it. Now, what what I'll sometimes do is I'll grab the Osmo and I'll change it because as you guys saw, it'll actually track my face. So I don't even have to look at it to know that it's tracking my face. And what you're seeing on the bottom here is sometimes when it's a little breezy out like it is today, uh, sometimes the wind starts to affect the mic. And so I put this little shotgun mic foamy over top of it and that just kills any of the wind sound. So yeah, I just keep walking, I keep talking, I do the whole thing and about 20 minutes later, I get to the place downtown that I like to edit the video. So let's go there. 
okay, so once I get to the place that I like to come, like I walk every day, come down here to downtown Burbank to different places all the time. Um, but I like to come down here. First I do is I, re- is I edit the thoughts on walks and then I write the show notes. So I get down here, I pop this open, pull out my iPad Pro, get it set up to do my video editing. Now you can use anything. There's lots of different video editors you can use on lots of different, even really cheap little laptops. So it's not a big deal. I just happen to use an iPad Pro because it works really, really well for me. So once I get here, the first thing I do is I take my Osmo. This has a little thing that I can flip around and make it, it normally sits inside so it's flush, but then you can switch around so it's got a USB-C, and I plug it into my iPad Pro, and I transfer all the footage from the Osmo Pocket onto the iPad Pro so I can edit it. So once I have the footage transferred onto the iPad, I edit it in LumaFusion. So LumaFusion, listen, I'm not going to tell you it's Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but if you own an iPad, this is the best mobile video editor you can possibly get. There's very few things I've found in Adobe Premiere, which I've edited on for years, that I can't do on LumaFusion. So once I get down here, I cut it all up, I do I put in the graphics, the transitions, anything I'm going to do, and I edit it all right here on LumaFusion, and then I go ahead and export it. So yeah, once I have it rendered, I use another piece of software on the iPad called Affinity Photo Pro. It's kind of like Photoshop that I use to make my thumbnail, and then right from here, I upload it to YouTube and publish it, and that's my process of making a Thoughts on Walks video. So. Let's go back inside. So there you have it, guys. There's the gear that I use, the gear that I used to use, how I edit it, and uh, the philosophy about why I even make these Thoughts on Walks videos. I hope you guys found that helpful to you. Again, you don't have to do something as expensive as the Osmo Pocket 3. You can just use your phone. Or you can, if you want to get a bigger camera and use it with a bigger cam- a camera, like a lot of the big YouTubers do. Like, they'll walk around with these big gimbals and a big DSLR camera on it. You can do that too, depending on what your needs are. But I found for me and what I do in my little vlogs, this is the setup, this is the editing, this is the workflow that really does seem to work for me. Now listen, I'm not as in-depth as say a lot of the good tech bloggers out there like Potato Joe or MKBHD or a couple of good Canadian kids like Unbox Therapy or Linus Tech Tips or uh, another good one I like to watch is Everyday Dad. Uh, I'm not as good as that, and so this isn't as helpful as their videos will be, but hopefully as just a film fan looking to start some blogging, hopefully this video was a little bit helpful to you. Would you like to see me talk you through anything else that I do in my daily ins and outs with my job? Jump down to the comments section below and let me know your thoughts. Uh, That'll do it for me for now. My name's John Campia, and until next time, bye bye